Our next film is Daniel, a fictional account of the infamous Julius and Ethel Rosenberg spy case, told from the point of view of their children, their two children, 30 years later. The Rosenbergs, of course, were the accused spies for Russia in the 50s who were put to death in the electric chair for having been convicted in a much disputed trial of passing the Russians' atomic energy secrets. But the concern of this movie is not so much whether the Rosenbergs were guilty, but rather the effect that parents can have on children and the difference between people who go along routinely with their lives and those persons who stand up for what they believe in. The film begins in the present day with the Rosenberg children. For fictional purposes here, they use the name Isaacson. And here, the son and daughter argue in front of their adoptive parents about a foundation that the daughter wants to establish in her parents' name. You can forget about the foundation. It doesn't need you. Go back to your life. Take his milk cow with you and go back home. If this doesn't stop right now, I am not serving. Go back to the stacks, Daniel. The world needs another graduate student. I don't have to go out and get clubbed to justify my existence. Why well, don't you just admit that you're a self- Stop it, you two! Susan, you're not handling this very well. Yeah, she is, she is, she is. She's a revolutionary. She's been to the barricades. She's got all the answers. And once it was sex. Sex was going to do it for you, right? And it was acid. Acid was going to do it for you. Remember that, Susiana? Huh, huh? And before that, it was God. You knew all about God. And now it's revolution. Oh, revolution. I thought we did that. I thought we'd been through that. Susan. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Those are two very fine young actors there, Timothy Hutton from Ordinary People and Amanda Plummer. And that man that we saw in that insert shot, uh, also at the dinner table, that's supposed to be her adoptive father. Well, one of the problems with the movie is that he looks so young, you can't believe him in a fatherly role. Now, the film alternates back and forth between present day and the 50s. And in this nostalgic scene from the 50s, young Daniel visits his father's radio repair shop and learns a bit about capitalism. Buy everything Mommy asked for, Daniel? Yes. So you got your favorite cereal. Who's on the back? Joe DiMaggio. Why do you suppose they put his picture on a box of cereal? Because he's strong. That's right. Now, although it doesn't say so in so many words, it puts an idea in your mind. That if you eat this cereal, you'll be strong like he is. Yet if you look at the nourishment this cereal contains, you'd see you'd do better with ordinary oatmeal. Oatmeal has lumps. So they're lying. And that is what advertising is. Lying. Now, uh, now, of course, not Joe DiMaggio. But one or another of your baseball heroes, he sells his name and his picture to the cereal company for money, saying he eats their cereal, when in fact he probably drinks beer and he smokes cigarettes. Yeah, it's funny. But what is he but a worker like anyone who earns his bread by his labor? And the fact that he plays a game called baseball, that makes no difference. He is no better than the man who works in a factory. Do you know why? Because he doesn't own the team. That's right. You're very smart. That's his real father there. I enjoyed this film very much. It has some problems, but it's quite emotional. Not on the issue of the Rosenberg's guilt, but rather, as I mentioned before, on the whole issue of taking responsibility for one's parents' legacy and for what one believes in. And in these days of social inaction, I found this story to be most powerful and certainly beautifully acted. I liked it a lot. I didn't enjoy the film, and I'll tell you, my basic problem was okay. I didn't know where to stand in relation to anything that was going on in this picture. Is it like, about the parents? Is it about the children? Uh -huh. Is it about guilt? Now, the director, Sidney Lumet, has said it doesn't matter if the Rosenbergs or the Isaacsons were guilty. I think it does matter, uh -huh. because there's a lot of evidence in this film that the woman went to the electric chair out of sympathy for her husband and not because she was guilty if he was guilty. Okay. So if you don't know these things, and if they don't matter, then what's it about? Does it mean, is the message of the movie that, you can hardly wait to answer, that nothing matters? No, here, Raj. Just like you were challenging me just back on the science fiction film and saying uh -huh. it's about science fiction movies, not about what's really going on okay, there. Yeah. Let me tell you that I think the key here is that it is not about the Rosenberg case specifically. Mm -hmm. It is about the emotion that, and certainly the reaction that I had as I watched these kids stand up or not stand mm -hmm. up for their parents, as I watched those people in the 50s stand up for what they believe in. The movie keeps hammering home and has a little ending with uh, sort of a strange ending with peace marches today. And I felt that the film was calling for 
action on what one believes in coming alive not at all in fact okay. there's even a suggestion in this film that we're not even sure they believe in anything there's a lot of speech making in this film that says they didn't know they were really communists or not or whether they just wanted to belong and be part of this movement they were true believers no. who didn't really act on convictions but on psychological needs i think that they act again now we go back to the case a little bit okay. i think that but i want to go back to the movie i feel that these people were acting out of a passion and a concern for other people for their parents, mm -hmm. for workers, that sort of thing. And I found it very fresh and exciting. Well, I could, we could continue this one. Okay. I we split again on Daniel with Timothy Hutton. Gene admired its portrait of people taking a stand. I thought both the characters in the movie were distractingly ambiguous.